Welcome to our top 20 video game music show. I was looking where the camera usually is. This week, it's all about Zelda. We have songs from the entire franchise chosen by Chris, Chiptune, Brony, Claudio, Rudy, Longbow, and myself. Thanks for joining. In the background are the sweet sounds of Zoro's Domain from Ocarina of Time. But moving on to our first official pick. It doesn't get more official this than this when you talk about the best Zelda tracks of all time. This is from Wind Waker. It is Dragon Roost Island. there that that is one of the greatest Zelda themes ever composed I think that's by Koji Kondo I love the mixture of like Celtic with a bit of Latin in there I feel like the Latin is that boom, boom, ba, boom, 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 boom. and then you've got that sort of guitar stringed instrument thing ting, ta, ting, ta, ting, ting, ting. and it sounds like it's just the strings are pulled so tight and of course the opening clippity clappity clap which to me sounds like kind of a throwback to uh, Gerudo Valley yes yeah, so you have these like Latin rhythms even kind of like the Latin canastas and that uh, I think that's the Dorian scale just like beautiful Koji Kondo Zelda melody wind instrument because you know you're on a sailboat it's all about the wind what direction it's going sailing across the sea just an unbelievable theme so innocent so good so strong not really a lot of instruments in it too but everything is there that's sort of a koji kondo thing don't overdo it don't have a lot of junk just have only the notes you need in the melody only the instruments you need of course, now that I've mentioned his name a few times, I'm sure somebody will correct me and say, Actually, yeah, that's uh, Toro Minigishi. Oh, actually, <laughs> actually, actually, Chris has written down Kenta Nagata. So maybe it's Kenta Nagata doing sort of a Koji Kondo impression or just their idea of what Kondo would want. Or maybe sometimes Kondo like supervises with his musical direction on these older Zeldas, the later older ones and does compose a few songs. It can be hard to find the proper crediting, but whether this is Nagata or Kondo, it's bloody amazing. All right, moving right along from Ocarina of Time, released in 1998, composed by Koji Kondo. This is The Lost Woods. <laughs>
so cool. I like that you have the uh, the tambourine and um, sort of like a guitar instrument and just things and the flute and there are things that sound like they could be made in the forest and played by uh, you know like the tribe, the tribe of uh, elves or whatever we're calling them, the Hillians. And you know what I really like is in is in the B section of it. So on the right channel, or maybe the left channel, because I have mine reverse. Boom ba boom ba boom ba boom ba boom ba. The that string piece there. To me, it just really sounds like a little elf nimbly kind of dancing along, you know, running through the woods. It's got like a real kind of um, trickiness to it. It's like very mis uh, mischievous, mischievous. You know, illusions, Michael. Just perfect for this. Uh, you know, what I like about it is that... It's like the basis of the melody has a real innocent kind of pureness to it. But it's almost like, like a kid going like, I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm just doing this. And you know, like the kid has figured out how to get around the rules. I'm just doing, I'm just playing my flute. Ba -da -ba -da. It's beautiful. Next up from Triforce Heroes. Does that count? I think so. This is Riverside, composed by Ryo Nagamatsu, chosen by Claudio. <laughs> Especially seeing Triforce Heroes, and I don't know. I think when I saw Triforce Heroes, I thought, oh, it must be like, you know, Dynasty Warriors. But I think I, now that I'm seeing the gameplay, I don't, I don't really have a good understanding of what Triforce Heroes was. Was it the four-player Zelda? Is that what it was? Anyway, this is fucking beautiful. That arpeggio. Boom, 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 boom. Really kind of harkens back to, like, the sound of the Game Boy or the NES where... They had to use the arpeggios because they had limited sounds. But the in the way they would add the bit of delay and uh, just to like flesh things out, but still like speak so much, make it sound like there's more going on. And um, God, it's got like a really haunting, magical quality to it. Just oh, I love that like twinkling kind of music box they're putting in there. Oh my god. It's it's funny cuz it's like on the one side it seems like so positive and bright and pure but you have like that mournful violin melody and then this kind of sinister bass stuff underneath. It's used for water underwater stages. Oh, well that arpeggio would be perfect like a little bubble rising to the surface. Wow, gorgeous. That's a, that's a nice one. I have, don't think I've heard that one. It sounds familiar. It makes me feel like, you know, it's from maybe an older, you know, like somewhere in Link's Awakening or something. Some kind of a dungeon theme then. Oh, that change there gets me. Next up, from The Black Sheep, Zelda 2, The Adventure of Link. Sequel to the first Zelda and the one that did its own thing the most. This is Battle Area 2, composed by Akito Nakatsuka, 
chosen by Rudy. with this one it really matches the uh, like the battle and the combat in this game is very it's like chaotic it's unpredictable but it also you need to be incredibly precise because the range link has with the sword is very short and you have nowhere to run because it's you're just stuck on that 2d plane right it's not like even the original zeldas that were top down you, know, you can go up down left and right um but this one, the enemies come at you and you need to deal with them. You you can jump over them if you time it right. You can block things if you, you know, are choosing to block high or low at the appropriate time. And it's a, it's a very difficult game that rewards precision. You know, it was basically the Dark Souls of its time. In a lot of ways, the upgrade path too. And I feel like the base, the way that... Boom, da, boom, ba, boom, ba, boom, ba. Like the bass is really traveling a lot and it's kind of going from like low to high, which reminds me of uh, the way you're blocking. Um, the melody notes are doing these almost like unexpected leaps up and down. It's the same thing, you know, it gives it that feel of the combat. And then that little uh, sound channel, marching drum. Probably gives it the most uh, Zelda feel, in a way, to the original one. It's great. It gives it um, the kind of like again more like a Latin feel on that bass. Gives it the, like this kind of exotic yet like it does sound like it could be in a pass a palace or it could be. It does have like an, kind of an importance to it, and I like the way that the uh, the two melody instruments have that bit of like a vibrato on them, which makes them sound like sound effects. I feel like they they just fit in so well with the rest of the game world. All right, going even further off the uh, main path. This next one is from Minish Cap. This is the Minish Woods, chosen by Longbow. Thank you. 
uh, composed by Mitsuhiko Takano, who is a Capcom music staff member and has worked on Marvel vs. Capcom 2, some, I saw Monster Hunter in there, Resident Evil, different entries in these long franchises. Um, I guess it's like Atlas, where they have more of a team way of doing things, and uh, I mean, they have really talented people. This is, this is great. It's got a lot of, uh, yeah, that's right. This was the Capcom spinoff, which is pretty crazy. I mean, you can tell the visuals are obviously way, way, way different. But uh, you can also see that, like, the movement. And what I think they got right is the, uh, the sword swipes and, and the general movement of it. But, like, different kind of animation than you would see. But it looks like they, they nailed the overall feel. It looks like the sprites are maybe bigger than they would be. Almost like the camera angle is slightly different than, uh, than you'd see in a Zelda game. I'll be right back. All right, next up, from Majora's Mask, composed by Koji Kondo, this is my first pick of the day. It's Astral Observatory. <laughs> me of the post battle victory theme in Final Fantasy 7 where it doesn't really feel like there's a home chord it just it always kind of makes you feel a little bit off guard and off kilter almost like you're floating through space where you don't really know where's down and where's up I love that run up in the beginning da -da 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 -da. you call that a chromatic run up where it just goes through each note rather than skipping any notes and uh, it just really feels like you're shooting up to the sky. The nice choir sounds, that harpsichord. There's just so many cool layers and like counterpoint going on. And sometimes the bass goes a little to a lower note than you expect, which just kind of gives it like a different feeling to the chord. And the whole thing about it just really makes you feel like you're in space and like there is no up, there is no down. There's your your idea of relativity is so different. The vastness of it. The majesty of space. Which, you know, when you think about Majora's Mask, a celestial body coming down and smashing and destroying everything because there is more to this world than, you know, what's under your nose and what's in Kakariko Village. There's a whole, uh, there's a whole other, you know, galaxy out there it's gonna do what it's gonna do wow all right next round of picks also from majora's mask also composed by koji kondo and toru, Mi toru minigishi has credits on this soundtrack as well this was chosen by chris and the track is song of healing
really reminds me of Twin Peaks, the way you have that that just steady, unsettling strings. It just goes down that one note. It sounds very. It's like there's a. It's like two strings or is two string notes are being played, like a kind of on a cello or something, or and uh, they're like full. There's a bit of delay, so the notes are kind of like. Or there's like a wobble to it. So th it's like they're overlapping with each other. It's got a discordant, unsettling feeling. And then you have this kind of pretty ballady piano accompanying it. Well, leading it, and then I guess the strings are accompanying it. So it's like like a lot of things in Majora's Mask and in Termina. It seems, you know, you recognize elements of it, but there's something off about it. This is the sadness and uh, an eventuality to it. Oh my god, it's just so creepy. All right, our next one from Link's Awakening again. This is the remake of. Was the original one called Link's Awakening? The remake of the Game Boy, Game Boy Color Zelda game? Composed by Ryo Nagamatsu. This is Staff Roll, chosen by Chiptune Baroni. So, I mean, it's a great uh, credits roll, just really evocative of a lot of um, the previous themes that have come before it, and kind of building off those, and this version's got like a nice kind of plucky, heroic, cutesy, beautiful feel to it that is just perfect for uh, for Link's Awakening. I, you know, I love the, st the art style they did in Link's Awakening a lot. I really think it's beautiful, but um, like I like that Nintendo style of uh, trying to make it look real in a different way. You know, the way like Yoshi's Woolly World is realistic, looks like wool toys, or this looks like sort of claymation in a way. But um, 
Oh, here's a little bit of Game Boy. But what I do find is I was really shocked at the slowdown of Link's Awakening. It was a real bummer. I think that usually the... I feel like the deal with Nintendo is like, look, it's not going to be 4K. It's not going to have ray tracing. But it's going to run really well. And artistically, it's still going to be visually interesting. And this was definitely visually interesting. Um, not this section I'm, we've been looking at over and over again. But, uh... The frame rate just wasn't there. I feel like they broke the deal. It was almost like maybe it was going to be a showcase for... See, look at this shit. Like, maybe it was going to be a showcase for... Uh, maybe, a, a, like, a more powerful Switch system or something, but they didn't really get there. Next up, from A Link to the Past. This is Seal of the Seven Maidens. Composed by Koji Kondo, chosen by Claudio. <laughs> You know, and nature is working against you, and the night's working against you, and uh, it's it's important, and there's something magical about it, but it's dark and it's uh, tragic. And there's a lot of these chords here that are just so, bum, bum, just really um, like shocking chords, just notes that are don't sound like they should be together. Boom, 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 boom. It's like with the way it walks up. It's like your character's just kind of taking a couple steps and confronted with something terrible, and something terrible, and like another brick wall and another portal. And uh, yeah, we're canting a terrible, mystical, awful tale to somebody. But a very, very effective piece of music. And there's something about the the, the compression because the Super Nintendo was using samples, but they were just so compressed. It gave them a really different, weird, otherworldly sort of feel, which, you know, you look at Zelda, it's, it kind of feels like a fantasy world that we recognize. But everything's a bit different, you know? Like, there aren't orcs. There's Gorons, and they're a little different. There's, you know, the elves are the main characters. Um, you know, it's not it's not just like dragons and mages and stuff. It all it always has its own stuff you recognize, but it's just slightly different. And I find that the Super Nintendo sort of sound palette, whatever you call that, sound font, just really really worked with that super well. But that was Koji Kondo. I mean, he was not only a master of composition, but it was the way he just knew how to use Nintendo's hardware for making sound and and how he just really took it seriously the quality of each sound and like the color of the sound and, and I think that came from him working on Nintendo's most important games and also creating their sound effects and everything you heard hey we've got another one from Link's Awakening this is Ballad of the Windfish Shore version composed by Kazumi Totaka Minako Hamano Kozei Ishikawa and arranged by Ryo Nakamatsu chosen by Rudy 
So, what is that original theme? Ba, da, 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 da. Is that even a Zelda theme, or is that from Final Fantasy? Um, is that the theme of love? I I love how the uh, the the remaster of Link's Awakening remake slash remaster how it does incorporate those Game Boy sounds because they sounded pretty great. You know, the Game Boy had it was smaller obviously than the original nes and it couldn't do it was like it was weaker visually but i feel like it had some interesting things it could do in the audio department that just sounded great and i think the nature of it being a handheld and headphones being like a popular thing at the time because people were using walkmans a lot and discmans and stuff so i feel like a lot of people heard the game boy music better than they heard a lot of the nes music because you know if you're a kid playing on a TV, maybe you didn't have, uh, the, maybe it didn't sound that good. Although I feel like back in the late '80s and '90s, TVs had pretty good sound systems. I cannot believe how terrible my flat screen TV sounds. Like if I don't have it hooked up to my stereo. <laughs> Fuck off. Haka hoka haka haka da 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 Meow, 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 meow. Piercing pure waveforms, yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's true. Da 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 Yeah, da 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 all right, another Majora's Mask coming your way. This time, this time it's Great Bay Temple, composed chosen by Longbow. Probably composed by Coach Kondo or Torishi.
dungeon theme, especially you know, like a weird sort of water one. I love that brown noise it does kind of come in. It's always there in the background, but then it gets a little louder, takes center stage a bit, then backs off. You know, because when you're going through these Zelda temples and you're just looking around and you're trying to look for, you know, maybe you're maybe you're lost and looking for the next way forward, and it's about like looking at all the signal and all the noise and trying to um, parcel out and find out what's you know what's the meaningful thing that I'm looking at here. You know, what's the clue that's giving me the path forward? Where is the answer? Where is even the puzzle I should be solving? And I feel like um, having all these kind of like different elements layered in and taking some of them out, bringing them up really high and lower, just kind of having like... It's like sort of existing off on its own. It's like a bunch of different song pieces just put together. And that drum really has that... Like the reverb effect they have in the drum gives it that in the bathtub, in the bathroom, kind of in a watery, reverby place kind of feel. That brown noise is a really kind of like whooshing, watery sound. But yeah, it does have that uh, kind of a dark, silent hill feel to it. Really cool theme and perfect for a dungeon. All right, next up, my second pick of the day as we finish up everyone's second pick before we move on to their third and fourth picks. This is Calling the Four Giants from Majora's Mask, composed by either Koji Kondo or Toru Minigishi. Because it kind of starts off on an initial note, and then it goes into this big journey, and then it's that, da, da, bah, you're waiting, your brain is waiting to get back to, da, and then when you hear those notes, yeah, uh, your brain is just waiting so desperately to resolve. Mm. I love it because it's it's slow, but it's powerful, but it's. It has a lightness to it that kind of gives it this like magical mystical power to it but it sounds like four giants and because you have this constant synth this is just like an un like an eventuality to it like a moon slowly coming to smash into a planet like the like the unstoppable force meeting the immovable object it's so powerful i love smooth the grooves version of it it's, uh, it's just so heavy, so dramatic. I fucking love it. All right, we're on to everyone's third pick from A Link Between Worlds. What a great game that was, sort of a... I guess I guess it started probably started off as a, a remake of A Link to the Past to put on the 3DS and then became its own thing that was sort of inspired by it but had its own world to it its own life to it. This is the Low Rule field theme composed by 
well, probably arranged by Ryo Nagamatsu. And let's see, I'm not sure how how uh, much this is. Um, if this is just like a copy of a condo song, I'm newly arranged, but I'm just going to stop talking and listen to it right now. <laughs> This first party flagship franchise is able to spend that extra time manipulating the uh, the general MIDI of that time. And anyways, I just I just love that fucking intro. It's like so creative, so original. It's got this real kind of like hop on a horse and just go. Explore. It does have a. It does have a great energy to it. And that, you know the heroic cell of the violin, especially when it's played in the violin, it, it gives it this feel of more of like you're hearing about the hero of time, you know, and that that idea of like all the different Zelda games being sort of these different Zeldas and the different times in the world. And yeah, it has that flamenco thing, sort of maybe inspired by like Crudo Valley, Dragon Roost. Island. There's so much action and uh, drama to it as well. Next up from a link to the past. This is Ganon's message composed by Coach Kondo, chosen by Chip Tune Brony. <laughs> I think you're like um, moving in up and down in fourths, which gives us this kind of like. Da, uh, 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 uh. It's like a real Koji Kondo villain boss castle trick he likes to do. Da, ma, it's like. <laughs> this makes it sound like every uh, corner you're going around, you're like, oh, oh no, oh no, oh, even worse, oh. No! 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 This next one is so bloody good. And the way that they combine the redone version with the original is unbelievable. This was composed originally by Minaka, sorry, uh, Minako Hamano. New arrangement by Ryo Nagamatsu, brought to us by Claudio. This is from Link's Awakening Face Shrine.
original sounds into the arranged soundtrack. You know, sometimes it feels like when a composer gets the job of arranging some new style of music, they have to walk this thin line of like, well, you are providing newer versions of someone else's music. You want to put your own spin on it. So, you know, I think of like, this is a, a weird example because if I think of like Besaid Island in the Final Fantasy X remaster, because uh, Masashi Omazu is doing a new arrangement for his own track. So I believe Besaid Island was his. And he slows it way down, you know, lots of different instruments, sounds completely different. Even though I think what makes Besaid Island so well is that those instruments are so powerful. Like these Game Boy bleeps and bloops are here. It's, it's like, don't just throw away so much of what made that original track great because you want this to be yours and to remove maybe the fingerprints of what somebody else left behind. There's a reason you're arranging it. You can, and like this one did, it still made its own completely uh, new piece. And now it's like this kind of becomes the definitive track in a way, you know? Which is interesting because if you're arranging and, and you're trying to get out of the shadow of the original track um, this one embraced the original thus becoming the uh, the definitive one and just the way that they wait to reveal that uh, like using those initial chords of the original song but just the way they have it arranged and then having that Game Boy beeps and boops just emerge like a demon. Oh, so good. Another one from A Link Between Worlds. I didn't realize we'd have so much Link Between Worlds music on here. A Link well, and uh, Link's Awakening, for sure. This is Octo Ball Derby, composed or arranged, I guess, arranged by Ryo Nagamatsu, chosen by Rudy. hearing a rock kit in, in Zelda music more like marching snare and tambourine and you know more like natural instruments not somebody going and then with that kind of distorted you know overdriven acoustic guitar it gives it this more like raw kind of fun feel which I think obviously matches sports and especially baseball being kind of like a backyard kind of dirty game you know he might be playing in a dirt patch for god's sakes and I guess that's the, uh, that's the melody of, like, not Kakariko Village, but the, the town that you start off, that Link starts off in, in Ocarina of Time, where he lives, where his house is, where all his stuff is. Yeah, it has a real kind of casual backyard feel, for sure. Yeah, the stop started the acoustic begging you to play or egging you on to play. Begging and egging. Asking for the same thing at different intensities. All right, time to get serious. We've had a lot of fun in the overworld doing side quests, talking to fun characters, but now it's time to go back to a temple. It's time to go back to the forest temple from 
Ocarina of Time, composed by Coach Kondo and chosen by Longbow. sort of ambient one similar to uh, that bay one from Majora's Mask. So ethereal. I like the percussive instruments of like tick, 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 tick. it sounds like a like a witch doctor has got uh, you know, a bunch of like the bones of their former patients rattling on this gnarled intimidating mysterious stick. The way like the synths kind of fade in and out and those voices and I like that kind of like uh huh, uh huh, uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. Not this part, the, uh, the other main voice you hear. It's like, even the way they put that timing. It's like, is it, is it like. Or. It's like, you don't really know where the emphasis on the uh, on the rhythm. So it keeps you sort of like confusing. It's like off kilter and it almost sounds like Donkey Kong took a bunch of acid and he's singing it too. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> acid Kong. That kind of you don't know where the emphasis is on so it just keeps you feeling really unsettled. Next up oh this is chosen by me. This is from Breath of the Wild. Probably our newest track of the day. This is composed by, I think, uh, Monica Kataoka, and it is Hateno Village. <laughs> Welcome back. Hello. I like this sort of Asian feel to it. And, uh, oh, this must be like the nighttime feeling of it. And the marimbas give it kind of like a bit of an exotic feel, but like a nice, 
seaside place, you know. Not that it's near the sea at all. The, um, the rhythm feel is so laid back. It just really takes the time getting through its phrase. It really just, like, sprawls out. Like, you know, like the pace of a village where everybody's got a job to do, but we know it's all gonna get done. And, uh, it's not the big city. It's just people going about their life. And what I like about it is that, you know, Breath of the Wild has you, uh, working really hard in the beginning, unlocking your powers, and learning how to explore the world and get off of the plateau. And then, if you, like, don't get to one of the, I think you, the first place you get to is a stable, which is nice. Then you're ready to hear some story, and then you finally get to a village, and it's such a big magical moment when you see, okay, how are they going to do the villages? What are they going to, you know, what are they going to look like? What does they have to do? And it's wonderful. God, it's weird seeing somebody else play Breath of the Wild and they have all the stuff turned on. And you don't need that at all. Like, you don't need to know the... how stealthy he's being. Just play stealthily. You don't need to know the temperature. Just... there's clues all around. Let go of your feelings, as Obi-Wan would say, when you're on your way to murder the hundreds of thousands of people that live on the Death Star. All right, next up, this one's going to be a little bit different of a format, but we're going to go through the uh, fairy fountain themes. Perhaps all of them? Chosen by Chris and originally composed by Koji Kondo. <laughs> So this would be the select screen from Link to the Past. Doesn't have that same super compressed uh, weirdness that a lot of Link to the Past music has. Sounds very pure and magical. All right, all creative time coming up. Of time. No, that was Ocarina of Time. Right. Yeah, great okay. first time okay. And Majora's Mask. Pretty similar. Wind Waker, Fairy Spring. Step right up, step right this way. Come see the beautiful fairy fountain. Is it a fountain of youth? You decide. Ha! <laughs> Those funny sound effects in there. Alright, Four Swords Adventure. Classic. Sounds like a fountain, you know, like like there's multiple levels of water. The water just just dribbling its way down. Okay, the map theme of it. Oh, here's just pop on some uh, Zelda military snare. Okay, let's go to Minish Cap. File select. So it's Capcom's version. You know, a very confident way of doing it. And adding some difference to it. Okay. This is the Minish Cap Fairy Fountain. The last 
that's what his files like. It's weird how it like really highlights that piece. It feels like everything is framing around it. Right? Twilight Princess Grape Fairy's Fountain. Twilight well, Princess, I could play Ilya's theme. It's really nice. I like playing Ilya's theme and playing with my baby. Okay. That was Twilight Princess's Great Fairy Fountain. Twilight Princess File Select. Alright. Phantom Hourglass Fairy Fountain. I like that. A little vibrato on there. <laughs> so goofy. Okay, spear tracks. Toot toot. I like that beat that it adds underneath it. It almost sounds like a lo fi hip hop. Fairy Fountain and Chill. Skyward Sword. Oh, I'll get fancy, baby. Some of the tempo seems weird. It looks like it speeds up and then slows down. You know? Like those are done too quickly. What if it's more of like a real performance? Doesn't sound like a real heart. Or somebody just even playing the MIDI into it. Oh. Actually, Skyward Sword had some more orchestration. Because it would have been on a DVD. I like those high strings, actually. It just sounds like an old like Hollywood movie from the 40s or something. Alright, Link Between Worlds, selection screen. Wow, really getting spicy hair and getting creative. I like that low kind of harp sound. Okay, fairy fountain from Link Between Worlds. Similar, just like a different layering of it. Great fairy fountain, milk bar. Changes the emphasis on the rhythm of it. Gives it a triplet feel. No, it almost like it adds a note in the beginning of it. Just it really messes with your expectations of how the rhythm's gonna come in. Weird. There's some fairy um, fountains in uh, Breath of the Wild. You, you meet her. You meet the fairy lady. Okay, that was great. Thanks, Chris. The nice thing is this one is so kind of different and it keeps you guessing on where that rhythm is going to be, you know, like emphasized on. Um, that it's, it's nice. It's something new. All right, our final track of the week. Thanks, everybody, for submitting your picks. If you want to submit picks, just uh, join our Discord. If the Discord invite link is not there, leave a comment on YouTube and you'll be personally replied to by me with a comment toward with a link a commented link a linked comment a link commented to get to our discord and join us for next show who knows what that'll be our final track is composed by koji kondo it's from zelda 2 this is the palace theme <laughs>
you can do that. That's cool. Stab up. so exotic i love the the playfulness and like those kind of like rhythm shots and that call and response and it's just got this like swirling and it, even the melody sounds like it's going through its own kind of arpeggio everything just sounds like it's kind of tumbling and circling and <laughs> that stop and the way the bass walks up it's just so good and then that third section when it comes in and it's just it's a third level of chaos. So bloody good. If you're watching on YouTube, it's over. Thank you. Goodbye. See you next time.